Good evening, everyone. Would like to take this time to welcome to my Sisters Keep of Women's Fellowship and welcome to Inspiring Moments. And I am your host, Minister Yvonne Johnson. I wanna welcome you on tonight and I am so excited um, for the speaker we have tonight. She is not only my sister in Christ, but she is my sister. Uh, we're in another group called Vision Building Women under the leadership of Dr. Sandra Wall Williams. And it is my honor and my pleasure to have her here on tonight, Dr. Kenya Wallace. So what we're gonna do, as we always do, we're gonna open up um, with a brief prayer. Um, after that, I'm gonna give you the, her bio and then I'm gonna turn it over into her hands. So let us bow our head for a word of prayer. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we come before you on this evening. God, thank you, Father God, for yet another opportunity to come into your presence. And Father God, on tonight, God, we come before you, God, and we lift this word up to you on tonight. And Father God, we just ask that you have your way. Father God, use your maid servant, Father God, to your glory. God, help your listeners to be receptive to what it is that you are saying through your maid servant. God, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And we say, just have your way and be glorified on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God is so good. So good. Okay, so I'm going to read her bio and, um, okay, hope everyone can hear me. Okay, Dr. Kenya Wallace is a woman of grace, anointing, and strength who walks with a prophetic grace. Her messages inspire hope and encouragement to uplift and train the body of Christ to live abundantly, abundantly, I'm sorry, as Christ intended. God has blessed Dr. Kenya with multiple gifts. Along with being a licensed minister, she is an author, speaker, educa ed educator, business owner, a liturgical dancer, teacher, a health and wellness mentor coach, and soon to be a doctor of psychology. Dr. Kenya uses her gifts to reach people from all walks of life, the church, the unchurched, the wavering, and the lost. In other words, everybody. She also teaches people how to change their minds, to change their lives by intentionally replacing negative thoughts with positive ones. It is her desire that everyone will recognize and walk in the power and authority that Christ has given us. Her prayer for others is the same as John's. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. And we know that scripture is coming from 3 John 1 and 2, and that was from the New King James, Ver King James Version. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to Dr. Kenya, beloved, and I just say, just let God have his way. Oh, amen. Thank you so much, my sister Yvonne, um, for that gracious opening and welcome um, introduction. And also, we are, um, we share the same alumni. We are graduates of Elizabeth City State University. Could not leave that out. Um, so, so thankful for our connection. So thankful for this opportunity to be here to talk to um these beautiful women and to share what God has given me. So although I'm a minister, I don't preach sermons. <laughs> um, that's not how I can. However, but the way that God uses me to deliver messages is primarily by means of encouragement. Typically, um, you know, sermons are based on scripture. We throw in personal experiences. God deals with me so differently. And because I am prophetic, my intentions of like the three points for a sermon never come out as the three points because Holy Spirit just comes in and hijacks it and I let him have his way. <laughs> so I do have notes prepared. However, <laughs> we're going to be led as um, Holy Spirit leads us. So thank you again for this opportunity. And I just wanted to share what the title is. And shortly after... We had spoken, Minister Yvonne. Um, I had another title in mind because we were just kind of talking about the relational aspect of your ministry. And 
being, what does it mean to be my sister's keeper and really showing up as our, our authentic selves. So I like music, I'm old school. The title that I wanted to talk to you all about tonight was, um, I believe it was Cheryl Lynn back in the day. I, I don't care if I'm dating myself, some of the younger people may not know, but it was the song, To Be Real, You Got To Be Real. That was the song that came to mind. I was like, yeah, because that speaks to authenticity. That thing speaks to being, you know, who we are, who Christ um, intended for us to be. But shortly after that, I had um, some time with God and I was thinking about um, just my life connections, people I met over my life, people that are in my life now. And what came to mind was, or at, during that time, someone reached out to me asking me for something. Had not heard from this person in I don't know how long, but I came to recognize that the only time I hear from this person is when they wanted something. And I prayed and I was like, God, like, why does this keep happening? What do I need to do so that I don't have these experiences again? Like, how can I um, preempt these types of interactions? And I was like, God, help me to remove that access, help me to be able to remove myself from that pattern of behavior because I found out that it's not reciprocated. Like I can't reach out to them when I need something because they're never available. But when they need me, oh, Kenya, can you pray? Oh, Kenya, can you da 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 da? And here I am because I am an intercessor as well. I run to it. I'm praying and I'm hitting back like, oh, you know, here's the word, apply the word, do this but I'm drained. And what God gave me to give to you all tonight was the title, Access Denied. You can't get to me like you used to. And it not only implies to personal relationships, but on the spiritual side of it, it's a message to the enemy. Because I don't know about you, there are times when I'm going to mind my business doing God's work, spending time with him. And then here comes something I always call him like a hiccup. And it's the enemy invading my thoughts, bringing distractions to take me off course. And I find myself all out of sorts, right? I find myself been out of shape. I want to lay hands on somebody because the enemy typically works through people. And I was recognizing that the person that rubbed me the wrong way gave the enemy an access point, but I gave him one too because I didn't respond prayerfully because we're supposed to pray at all times, right? Pray without ceasing and to always be vigilant and sober-minded. I wasn't because I allowed those attacks. I allowed those interactions to throw me off course. And here I am in my feelings, acting up. So y'all, a lot of people have complimented me on how humble and graceful I am. But when I tell you I'm a work in progress, I promise you, if you talk to my mother, she would tell you a totally different side of Kenya growing up. I was loud, attitudinal. Um, it wasn't allowed in my house, but outside of the house, you know, we, act, you know, we got around our friends, you know, it was a different version of us. So... Whatever you brought to me is what I gave back to you. If you brought good to me, I gave it back to you. If you brought some mess, I gave you some mess. And I, I prided myself on that. So to be humble and to really learn how to submit to God and to live the way he wanted to has been a work in progress. And I'm growing and getting better. But I promise you, old Kenya likes to come up. She likes to like pop up like, hey, I'm here. So when those attacks come, old Kenya, like sometimes she pops through like, what? We ain't doing this today. And then it's like, nope, back up. But I've given the enemy access. I've given him legal right to come in and mess with my mind, to mess with my situation, just to mess. And we already know when he comes, he does not come alone. He brings all the boys with him. So that means I have to go back into my prayer house prayer room. I have to get deeper in the word. All of the progress I made up until that point, it's almost like it was for nothing because I gave him that access. 
And I was like, God, I'm tired of these types of interactions. I'm tired of the devil messing with me. And I began to ask, what is it? What am I not doing that gives him access? I thought I, you know, removed all manners of access. Um, and for my prayer warriors, you know, we call out all the demons, all the things that we, you know, we can think of that would give the enemy access. But I had to go deeper. I had to ask God, what is it about me? Because I was making it about the person. And what happens typically when we're hit, we go after the person. We don't go after the spirit because yes, we know the scripture tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and the principalities and all those, those wickedness that comes from the darkness. And I'm severely paraphrasing y'all. But even though we know that, we're caught up with this right here. This is all we see. So we name the person. We don't call out the spirit. So I wanted to know what is in what was in me that kept allowing this to come back. What lesson didn't I learn? Because sometimes it's not even about, sometimes the attack comes to teach us a lesson. So for me, my less, the lesson I learned was one, to not react out of my emotions. That was the first access point. The second thing I learned was to not be so accessible to people, to not be so amenable, so friendly, to not be so accommodating. So when I recognized those, when Holy Spirit helped me to recognize those, I was like, okay, so now why am I accommodate, overly accommodating? Why am I so easily accessible? Why am I so easily offended? So now I had to, I was beginning to go deeper below the surface because I meant that thing. I was like, I don't want to, I'm making progress and I'm seeing answers to prayers. And now boom, because the enemy doesn't want me to progress only so far because he knows for me, my pattern, when I'm focused and when I'm going forward, and then when I'm hit with something, I'm down for a minute. That was old Kenya and my old approach. So now I'm able to recognize it, target it and say, mm -mm, I'm cutting off access. So when we say access denied, denied means we're refusing permission. So then once I began understanding, going deeper and deeper, and I was like, God, where did all these things, why am I so eager to please? Why am I, you know, wanting people to see me in a positive light always? Why am I just allowing these things to come? And what Holy Spirit revealed was that a lot of things stem back to childhood. Um, I was a small, little skinny thing in the country. People always said I was beautiful. I had, I had hair then, y'all. Um, but even with that, we know kids are mean. I've said some mean things to people because we replicate what's been done to us, positive or otherwise. And I had to recognize that a lot of the stings that I was feeling and a lot of the, of the way that my personality had become um, structured was based out of that. And so what we do is we build belief systems or thought systems around that. Right, wrong, or indifferent, that's just human nature. That's the way our brain works, um, our brains work. So I began to look at over time, I was like, so when else have I demonstrated these behaviors? And I saw the pattern. I gave people access to treat me that way, to pick me up and put me down like a little teddy bear when, you know, when it was okay, when it was convenient for them. But now that I can recognize it, I can shut off the access. So I had to recognize the access points. I had to recognize what are those things within Kenya that gave permission for people to say certain things to me or to treat me a certain way. What things did I accept that I should not have? And then I had to do the work. I had to 
aside from asking God, I had to begin implementing what someone told me a while ago that my no is anointed. That it's okay to say no. It's okay not to respond to the text message. It's okay not to overextend. It's okay to even not extend yourself to those who are willing to reciprocate. And I had to be okay with that, but I, I just want, I want to be honest. It was hard. It was, it was easier said than done. Like in my mind, I had to plan and I was like, okay, I'm going to work this until the next call. This time it was a phone call. And I looked at the phone. I was like, I already know what you want. Like I would be in a good mood. My whole disposition would change. That's too much power. I was giving that person in that encounter too much power. So I had to shift it. And I was like, mm, not today. I don't have time. God, you take care of that because I don't have time. When I do have time or if I should have time, I'll call back. And having to do that repeatedly, I became stronger and it became easier to do. So when we look at denying access, I want you to think about a person or an encounter that may have rubbed you the wrong way or taken you off course. It may have been recently, it could have been, you know, sometime this year. And I want I want to ask you, is it the same person? Ah. Is it the same person? So I'm seeing your comments in the chat and I'm smiling inwardly because and I'm not responding individually because I will get off track and I don't want to do that. Um, but if it's the same person, I want to, I want you to consider this. And I feel like this is what Holy Spirit is saying. That person is your, is an assignment. They were assigned to you, not by God, but by the enemy. Because it's not a negative thing. It's not anything that you've done wrong. It just means that the glory of God is all on you. The glory, if it's the I'm seeing the same person, yeah. And for me, it's not just one person. It's a couple of people, really two. And I'm like, okay, God, what is this about? But what I recognize was I pray more. When those encounters come, I pray more. Because the enemy waits um, until we are settled and we're at peace. And that's when he throws, he those people pop up. It's a call, it's a text message. And you're like... Really? And if you know, have you noticed that your energy just is released? It's almost like a balloon that you're blowing up. And right before you tie it off, before, you know, for whatever reason you let go and it just, you're just depleted. It's an assignment from the enemy. It's an attack that he's launched to keep us off track, keep us unfocused to keep our eyes off of God, off of the will of God and what God would have us to do. Yes. So it's important that when we do recognize those distractions, that we pray, okay, God, how do I handle this? Because there are times I like, I talk to God. I'm just upfront and real with him. Uh, not super raw, but I'm raw. And I'm like, God, I'm gonna need you to handle that. Cause I don't even have time. And then there are times I'm like, Lord, Handle it because they, they're finna get it. I don't even care right now. But that's still something in me. So again, it's, it's there to reveal. Even though the enemy has sent it as a negative, remember, God works all things out for our good. Everything that happens to us is not always God's plan or design for us because the enemy, he's trying. He's on his job day and night. He doesn't let up. So when that happens, we go to God, we ask for forgiveness for allowing ourselves to succumb to that. We repent. And then for me, I ask God, how do I move forward? How do I now interact with this person when I have to? Because there are some people we, we don't have to ever communicate with. We can pray for them, but we keep them at arm's distance um, so to speak, um, to further deny their access. So when we look at that, and even when we can um, 
if we think back to like middle school, high school, and we had those friends that we thought were like, oh, our, our besties, and they betrayed our confidence. They treated us indifferently, or they did something to hurt us. Those things happen for a reason. They are lessons we learn from about interpersonal relationships and how to um, use conflict resolution. But also at the same time, it shows us, it's like, okay, not everyone who smiles in your face is your friend. And I like music, movies, and food. So y'all will hear me reference those from time to time. Um, I'm a 70s baby. So when I thought about that, the enemy uses those closest to us. He does not use, oftentimes he does not use a stranger because he knows that we're prepared for that. We're prepared for the hits to come from other places, but we're not prepared for those hits to come from our loved ones, the people who are in our faces all the time. And what the song that came to mind was um, Backstabber. They smile in your face, but all the time they want to take your place. The backstabbers, the ones that go, hey, sis, I saw you got a little program going on. Hey, sis Yvonne, yeah, how's your little ministry doing? Y'all, it took me a minute to recognize that that was not a, a compliment. And this came, the comment came from someone I loved and respected. And they were like, yeah, I saw you had your little conference and da 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 da, da. And I was like, okay. That's not the response I was expecting. So leaving this person's presence, I was driving home. Someone else that was in the space at the same time heard the comment and called me and asked how I was doing. And I didn't know, I didn't have a response at the time because I'm trying to be positive. I'm not trying to, you know, bad mouth anybody, especially, you know, people of God. Um, but I said, I, I don't know. And she said, yeah, that wasn't cool. She said, because what you did was a great thing and it was not little. She was like, we don't look at numbers. We look at the quality of what God gives us and the quality of what we do. She was like, mm -mm. she said, don't let that get to you. She was like, nothing you do is little. And I had to let that sit because I was like, why would this person say that to me? Because, you know, there were some times I'm still operating in some naivete and I'm praying against it. I'm like, God. You know, this person has prayed for me. This person has spoken into my life. I support them, you know, whatever they're doing. What did I do for them to feel that way? Nothing. That was God revealing something in them. They had given the enemy an access point that led to jealousy and envy. And I didn't, I didn't want to believe it because I'm like, you know, we're all, you know, Christians, we saved and, you know, we're leaders and we, you, we're not supposed to do that. But we're human too. We are spirit beings in fleshly bodies having earthly experiences. Jesus was persecuted. He was mocked. He was scorned. We know all the things that happened to him. And I recall the time I prayed so often, I, I want to be like Jesus. Not remembering, he went through a lot with people. But at the same time, I had to learn to grow and respond the way that he did. To not let it get to me. And some days I do well. And then there are other days, I got to get on my knees. I'm like, Jesus, come on. Because um, you're taking, taking too long. I need you to get this one now. But I had to recognize the access point. So whatever God has given you to do, it is not little. Let no one put it down. Let no one berate you. Let no one question what God has given you. Because I had a conversation with um, a woman I met when I first got on Clubhouse at the beginning of the year. And God was dealing with me about the imposter syndrome because I was like, I'm hearing all these people with all these grand titles and all these adjectives before their names. And I'm like, I'm just Kenya, right? And she was like, you're not just Kenya. 
She's like, and I want you to remember that when God gives you a vision, it's for your eyes. You can't see with someone else's eyes. No one else can see your vision because God didn't give it to them. So whatever people are saying that you're doing or not doing or you're doing too much, they don't understand because God didn't give them what he gave you. So how do we deny access to the haters? How do we deny access to the enemy? When it comes to people, we limit our contact with them. We limit the conversations. Even if you just say, oh, I got another call. Girl, let me call you later. Don't give a specified time. Let me call you later. Later could be next week. It could be next year. It could be next decade. Later is later. And be okay with that. Don't share everything, especially on social media, because there are some good aspects to social media, just like anything else. But there are also some bad that comes with it because the enemy uses that as like a breeding ground because we're seeing these perfect pictures, these polished poses, you know, these beautiful, immaculate posts about people's lives, but that's just a snippet. We don't really see behind the lens. We don't see behind the screen. Um, and there was a young man that I interviewed for my dissertation and I asked him about his opinion about social media and you know people's behavior on it. He's 14 and he said, people talk um, different than they type. And I was like, huh. And he said it again. I said, so what does that mean? He was like, you know, people will say one thing, but then they'll type something different on social media. So that made me pay even more attention to my posts. What am I putting on social media? What am I presenting? I don't put a lot of my family business on there or things. I mean, even though most of my family are my friends on social media, but still I'm learning to be more selective. Because I recognize that's another access point. Because people can hate on you from what they see on the outside. They don't even know that sometimes it took everything in you to even muster up a smile to post that selfie as a means of encouragement for someone who's going through something. So with that, we got deny the access to the enemy. And James 4 and 7 tells us exactly how to do it. I'm gonna read the New Living Translation. It says, so humble yourself before God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So when we humble ourselves before God, we're recognizing that we cannot live and operate in our own strength. We can't come against those who come against us in our own power because the Bible says not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. That's what God is reminding us. We need him to fight for us and with us. And he gives us the tools to do it. But we have to surrender. We have to get rid of self. And when I tell you I had a time trying to get rid of Kenya. Because I wanted to handle situation. I wanted to cuss people out. I wanted to lay my hands on people. I wanted to see them hurt the way that they hurt me. I wanted to do what they said in the Old Testament. I want to give an eye for an eye. But that's not God's way. We're, we're under a new dispensation. We live under the New Testament, right? Because Jesus came, he fulfilled the law, but he also gave us power and authority. So how do we wield that power and authority? We apply God's word. We apply his word. We deny ourselves. We turn the plate down. So when the, remember in Matthew, when the disciples went to cast the demon out of the man and they were like, who are you? We don't know you. <laughs> like, And Jesus is like, you know, this only comes out by fasting and prayer. We're going to have to turn the plate down more, especially in this season and what's coming December forward. 
we're going to have to turn the plate down more. We're going to have to surrender to God. We're going to have to spend more time in his presence. That doesn't mean that you're hours and hours on the floor. It means when you're driving in the car to and from work, when you have a lunch break and when you're working and you're just like, Lord, I thank you. Oops, that was me. I apologize. Lord, I thank you. And you're just having a conversation with him in your mind. But then you're also pausing to let him speak. When you call out the enemy and you call that demon out by name, whatever it is, guilt, shame, fornication, lying, thieving, backbiting, murderous spirits, vagabond spirits, all those, whatever Holy Spirit brings to your mind, whatever he gives you, you call it out and you plead the blood of Jesus. You put it under the blood of Jesus and you tell it where to go. Send it to a dry place. And tell it never to come back to you again. And that's how you deny access. And with doing that, Holy Spirit will also give you the strength and the courage to keep those people at bay and to give them a right word. To give them the word that they need to hear and sometimes nothing at all. So, from this day forward, access denied to the enemy and to people. They can't get to us like they used to. Those tactics don't work anymore. And if something happens and you just slip up, guess what? We get up and we start again. That's all we do. So I pray that you have been encouraged. I pray that you have received um, something that will help you moving forward in your journey. I love you. I'm praying for you. Um, and I'm excited about what God has in store for you. God bless you. I love you. Mr. Yvonne, I think I did go over that 15 minutes that I said. <laughs> Oh, you're muted. Oh, there you are. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Dr. Wallace, for that awesome word. Access denied. Oh. You can't get to me like you used to. Beautiful. And that's okay about the time because definitely what we want the Lord to have his way. And I just want to thank you once again for that word. And you're such a humble and loving person and you you exude with positivity. That's what I think about when I see when you pop up on oh. On, face, on Facebook in the morning. And I just love how she greeted everybody. She said, good morning, beautiful. And I just love your spirit. Just want to thank you once again and thank everyone that uh, have joined us on Facebook and on Zoom. And what I'm going to do right now, I feel in my spirit, I'm going to um, end the Facebook Live. I am um, at this time get ready to end it. And then we would just be in the Zoom room. And in the Zoom room is where we're going to open it up for comments. Um, anybody have any comments, anything they want to say, any prayer requests? Um, but, and um, like I said, right now, I'm going to end the uh, Facebook Live recording. So we thank you for joining us and ask that you continue to pray for us and to enjoy your family this coming um Thursday, which is Thanksgiving. Remember all the things that you are grateful and thankful for. Um, thank God for your family, cherish and love on your family, but remember to always give God thanks. And we thank you and we ask that you enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Okay, ladies. So I have stopped the recording. Um, so right now, I'm going to turn it over. Um, Sister Kenya, see if you had any, um, Dr. Kenya, I'm sorry, see if you had anything else you wanted to say right quick.